My name's Roy Dunn, I'm a professional photographer and I'm here at Cognosis right now to walk you through the automated process that the StopShot remote control system provides you in order to be able to measure the shutter lag of your camera. If we're doing high-speed photography applications, shutter lag is a very important factor or element that we need to consider in the creation of our high-speed images. The stop shot, as you probably recall from previous videos, has four global timing modes. And we can go to those modes by hitting the config button for a couple of seconds to get into the global configuration mode. And we'll see we are presented with the global configuration screen. The default mode that the stop shot comes up in is the independent timing mode. If we scroll through, we'll go into sequential mode. One more click takes us to the shutter lag mode and a further click takes us to the time-lapse mode. I'll cycle back through so we get back to the shutter lag mode because that's what we're going to be performing here. A single click of the config button takes us back to the main screen. The main screen that is presented in shutter lag measurement mode is actually different from the main screen in the other modes and you will see that because it's up down to start, provides the lag measurement and tells us the duration of the shutter lag once we've actually done the measurement. The connections we see here, we have the sensor input, which is the um, beam sensor from either of the beam kits, the infrared beam kit or the laser beam kit. It can also be the mini beam sensor. If you're a water drop enthusiast and you have the water drop kit, you can actually use the mini beam sensor to measure the shutter lag of your camera. The output or trigger one is connected directly to the camera, which in this case is a Canon EOS 7D with an integral flash. Shutter lag is the time delay that is between us pressing the shutter button of the camera and the shutter physically opening over the sensor and creating the exposure. That's a finite time delay. And in various cameras, it can be as low as perhaps 40 milliseconds or 40 one hundredths of a second, 40 one thousandths of a second or 4 one hundredths of a second, I'm sorry up to even a quarter of a second, 250 milliseconds. The way we perform this measurement is to have the camera set up, wake it up so that we just touch the shutter button so the camera is in wake mode. And then we have the flash up because we're actually going to fire the flash that this receiver is going to receive. And you'll notice here that the receiver at the moment is it's in default configuration as it comes out of the box if this was your laser, if you were using the laser beam kit. If you are, the laser beam receiver has a diffusion and daylight filter on the front. For proper shutter lag measurements, we actually need to remove that. Very simple, unscrew it. Now we're looking actually at the bare sensor. We'll just put that to one side. Coming back to the camera setup, we have the flash ready to fire and it's important to remember that the flash needs to be in manual mode. The, if we are using the camera as, as most of us probably do with the flash in TTL mode, we need to remember to convert it back to manual mode. The reason for that is in TTL mode, as you press the shutter button, the flash fires a really tiny signal out to measure the scene to tell the main flash how much exposure to do. That pre-flash will confuse the shutter lag measurement. In fact, it will corrupt the shutter lag measurement. Not a fault of the camera, not a fault of the system. It's just the mode. In manual mode, you get a simple single flash out and that's what we use to measure shutter lag accurately. Now, how on earth do I do this? Well, it's pretty tough. I hit the button, the camera fires, and the readout here says 224 milliseconds. So the shutter lag of that occurrence was about nearly a quarter of a second. If I hit it again, it's about 223 milliseconds. If I hit it again, about 180 milliseconds. That's up there, that's quite a lot of time. Something to consider though, is that on Canon cameras, such as the 7D, the 6D, any of the Rebel series, the 60Ds, the 70Ds, the shutter lag is minimized when the camera is in wake mode. You're seeing metering and the camera is kind of energized. When you press the shutter button halfway, if, if you look through the camera viewfinder, if you shut, press the shutter button halfway and release, the viewfinder information will stay up for a few seconds. It's during those few seconds, if you fire the shutter, it will produce the minimum shutter lag. The way to show that is that if I fire the 
um, shuttle lag measurement once, it's going to be fairly long, but if I do subsequent measurements fairly quickly, that shuttle lag will come down in time. So I'm going to fire the first one, 227, but now it's 70 milliseconds, 79 milliseconds, 89 milliseconds, 89 milliseconds, 86 milliseconds. I'll leave it for a few seconds, fire it again, and we're back up to 225 milliseconds. That may sound confusing, and, and perhaps it is, but there's an easy way around it. Rather than having the, cable, the direct interface cable between the stop shot and the camera, we can use actually the switch interface cable. And in another video, I described the operation of this switch interface. It has three positions. Off, which disconnects the stop shot from the camera. Sleep mode, which is as in per this cable, this direct connection here, or wake mode, which is the equivalent of me permanently pressing the shutter button halfway so that the camera is permanently in its wake up mode and ready to produce the minimum shutter lag. That's a really useful feature to have if we're doing high speed photography. Nikon series cameras and other series cameras are kind of always in their minimum uh, shutter lag mode and it's typically 40 to 50 microseconds, 40 to 50 milliseconds, perhaps 60, but they're always down in that domain. The fact that the, the Canon cameras vary is not an issue. We just need to make sure we understand it and accommodate it in our setup. So I hope that's clear. It's very simple doing shutter lag measurements. As you can see, it requires a whole button push. Thanks for watching.